What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many -many relationships in MongoDB. And we're just gonna be talking about theory. You can rest your little fingers. We're not gonna be, you don't need to actually type anything in the terminal. If you do, I will be doing all the typing. You just sit back and let the theory soak in. The most important part here is the theory and if you can get the theory down, you're pretty much free range. You can do any type of command as long as you can understand the theory. One of the most important aspects of understanding these relationships and understanding MongoDB, how MongoDB works in general and the flexibility and the power of it is to understand the difference between embedded relationships and referenced relationships. So, in regular SQL, everything is a referenced relationship. Everything is a foreign key. Um, in order to uh, reference another table or in order to form a relationship with another table, you have to have a primary key and a foreign key. Maybe you don't. I don't know of any situation where that's not possible, but in 99.99% .99 of cases, you have to have that key. And if you look here, I've got a very simple example. And this is actually a one-to-many relationship. So let's just say we have a Pokemon uh, document, uh, what record, whatever you want to call it. If you're coming from SQL world, it's a, it's a record. If you're in MongoDB world, it's a document. And within, let's just say this one Squirtle has different moves. So he has Bubble Beam. He has... I can't remember hyper beam. I think there's like hyper beam um, and then there's tsunami or something or there's different moves that Squirtle can do that are water related. And when you have one to many or one Squirtle has many relationships, you have a reference. We are referencing right here. So this one one is indicative of bubble beam. So pretty much it would be as if bubble beam was in our table just like this, but it's not because it's referenced and it's just being referenced by a number. Then you have embedded. So embedded, and I have an address right here. This is actually a one-to-one -one relationship. So let's just say, um, I think this is, I'm gonna actually redo this one on the fly and we're, let's do an example of a embedded relationship. So an embedded relationship with the same exact example would be look like this. You would have moves and then you would have uh, move one or it would be like ID like this. And then it would be bubble beam. And that would be an embedded relationship. So if you were to actually pull this document and let's go ahead and let's look at some real examples here. What is, so this, what do you like just right off the bat? What do you think that this one is? I mean, you can leave a comment down below, but just kind of in your brain, just like think about this, like what kind of relationship is this? This is not actually, this isn't even, this is the trick question. This isn't, or this is just an array because it doesn't have the key value pairs. Trick question. Okay, so let's keep going down. Let's actually find like a real one-to-one -one relationship just so that you can see like what it actually looks like. So what is the images? This is actually a one-to-one. -one. This, is, this is a one-to-one -one relationship. This, this image is embedded. You, as you can see, there's no uh, number here that is referencing an images table. So if we were to have a if we were to have a reference document instead of having all this data right here, it would reference another an images table where it would be able to pull from it and bring that it wouldn't ex let just put it this way it wouldn't exist there physically it would exist there as a number it would exist there logically and it it would be stored somewhere else so. We can kind of go back to here, but when it's embedded, it's already there. And that is, if you can just, you know, if that really confused you, I hope it didn't confuse you too much. It is kind of like a weird concept, but when it's embedded, when it pulls this information, it's already there. It's not referenced. And in a SQL database, 
these wouldn't even be here. These would just exist as logical references, just kind of the way it sounds. It's a reference. It doesn't actually exist there. It would exist in another table. And that's the difference between a reference and an embedded document. And the whole reason that we use MongoDB pretty much is going to be embedded documents. If I had to say, I'm gonna say like 90% of the time, whenever you're dealing with data in MongoDB, it's going to be embedded. Sometimes called nested, but I think it's more so embedded. Let's just call it embedded. So we've got that very, very important point out of the way. That's like the ba that's like the first baby step. You need to understand that before you can understand anything else. And if that confused you, make sure you know the difference between embedded and reference before we actually start talking about the rest of these. So let's talk about a one-to-one -one relationship, which we briefly just mentioned. So I like hacks. I, I don't like, you know, formal definitions for stuff. I just like to understand, like, I just like, you know, what's like a quick way that you can spot a one-to-one -one relationship. The quickest way to spot a one-to-one -one relationship is it is a single bracket. It's a single squiggly mark. It's, there's no, there's no array. And I'll talk about where an array comes in here in a little bit but just for now just realize that a one-to-one -one, it's pretty much a nested document if it's 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 an address and theoretically we could if this is just a dummy you know some dummy data right here we could just get rid of you know we we could just get rid of this We're like what's wrong with just having this like why can't we you know why can't we just do that and just get rid of the address and have it look just like we did before you do that because logically you want to be able to separate and you want to be able to uh denormalize data because it helps number one the data look more logical and if you do want to reference it down the line you can do that as well too just think like what is like the really the power of databases you could just store everything in one single database but that really doesn't make sense and a lot of the power of databases is being able to logically separate things and logically group things and know exactly where your data is at and not get you know lost in the sauce like i talked about in a previous video in today's world of just endless endless data like what if this whole entire thing were just one huge you know, huge page of MongoDB data, it would be absolutely just incredible to decipher all of it because there's no logical grouping. So that's one of the reasons that we have the one-to-one -one relationship and the one-to-one -one relationship. Let's just go ahead and look at some, a couple of simple examples. This is a one-to-one. -one. You see, whenever I like the hack, whenever you see just a little squiggly mark, like whenever you see a bracket like that, that's how you spot a one-to-one. -one. This is another one-to-one. -one. Let's see if we can find, let's see if we can find, oh, look at that. That's that's uh, the array right there. So that's going to bring, this one's different. This is not a one-to-one -one, and it's an empty one-to-many and we'll, that's what we'll, we'll talk about here. So a one-to-many, the most common one-to-many relationship and the best representation of a one-to-many relationship that anybody can kind of vibe with, you know, identify with is going to be a comment system. So when you're on Facebook, one, whenever you navigate to profiles, look at it like this. One profile can have many comments. You need to be able to logically relate these this data because you can't just have comments forever and you need to be able to logically group different comments together so that it just it's so that you can logically group the data number one and you can form these one-to-many relationships so if we just had a one-to-one -one relationship and for some reason we created a comment system with a one-to-one -one, only one profile could have one comment but in order to have multiple comments within our profile we would need a one-to-many relationship. And that's kind of where this one-to-many uh, idea comes from and why it's so powerful. A one-to-many relationship is going to be probably the most common of all common relationships. You actually, you do see a lot of one-to-one, -one, but one-to-many I think is probably, it's the most common in SQL. It's one of the most common in MongoDB and it's 
I think it's one of the most powerful, and it's not, and it's actually not that complicated either. And there's tons of other one-to-many relationships, like one city can't, you know, one one city can have, like one. Okay, here's a good example. One city can only have one mayor, and you want to store mayor data, but one city can also have many commissioners. I just kind of came up with that probably not the best idea but one city can have many commissioners and like one you know i live in charlotte north carolina charlotte can have and you wanted to store commissioner data you would have many commissioners another example probably i should have probably just said this one to begin with is uh addresses so a lot of times one person only has one address but let's just say you you're a wealthy and you have multiple investment properties maybe you have many addresses or maybe you own a beach house you have many addresses and you can always tell a one-to-many relationship in mongodb by this little thing right here you you always have the array or you always have the bracket and we can see an example down here so let's go ahead let's go right here perfect example review yeah review is a perfect example our dummy data has a review system so reviews can have uh, a many to mit or a one-to-many relationship and as you can see here, this listing, this uh, Airbnb listing has many reviews. So let's talk about the last one. And another very powerful one is going to be a many to many. Many to many is going to be kind of complicated. So hang on to your butts, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. So trick question. In SQL, we have a join table. You can do a join table in MongoDB, but you don't for a specific reason. And why don't you do a join table in MongoDB? If you if you know the answer, like why we don't use join tables in MongoDB, please leave it down below. But if you don't, I'm about to explain it to you. So in SQL, and this may be like, this might be a little bit of a mind fuck and you might, you know, if you don't understand it, it's okay. It's not absolutely pivotal that you don't understand, but it, it will help you, you know, learn these relationships. So in SQL, for a many to many relationship, technically you don't need a join table. Fun fact of the day, you don't need a join table. We have join tables because if there was relationships in here and there was not a relationship what you would have is you would have so many nulls that it would screw it would probably screw up your database because it would corrupt like maybe not maybe not not today but it it would make your database and in databases you don't want that many nulls if you have that many nulls it's kind of means you're doing something wrong with your database or you need to figure you know you need to refactor your database but we have join tables because if we didn't have join tables for every one to many relationship in the table if there wasn't a relationship it would be null and you don't want that but in mongodb because it's schemaless and it's unstructured 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 Structed, whatever. <laughs> I don't don't know that. I'm just you know going off the top here. We'll we'll figure out that word later. It, because it's unstructured, you don't have that issue. If there's nothing there and there's no nulls, that means that there's not going to be any data there. So what you can do is, and here's like probably the best and simplest example in a many to many relationship roles. Like add like in a database for a user, you have an admin, you have different groups, you have different, you know, different users can belong to different groups and groups can belong to different users. And there's all different variations. It's not like one group can only, you know, have so many users or one user can only belong to so many groups and other people can't belong to those groups users and groups can belong in all different ways and the way that we do many to many relationships is you essentially for your users table you would have a groups or this would be uh roles whatever you want to call it we could call that we could call this roles as well too so we, we would have roles so this is roles so this is roles and or wait a minute oh yeah the uh roles up here for the roles up here and then persons down here 
and then you could store these relationships logically. So this is this ex is exactly what a many to many relationship inside of MongoDB looks like. And if you look here, uh, we have our you know MongoDB or we have Joe Mongo, you know whatever. And within this MongoDB user, Joe exists in here and Sally exists in here. And she's just a regular, you know, Joe and Sally are just MongoDB users, but let's just say uh, Joe here is also an admin. Sally is not an admin, so we store Joe underneath the admin. And then here, same thing, the role relationship exists within the user table as well too. And that's the reason that we don't have a join table. So a join table, we would have that relationship, but it's in a different table, but because we don't have to worry about nulls and we don't have to worry about there being like a, just a bunch of empty rows in our MongoDB database because it's schemaless, we can just get away with the simple, just having the roles and having the groups on, in each individual table as opposed to the join table. But that is pretty that is like the whole entire idea uh behind all of it like i said once you figure out this you can figure out how to like it's if you've gotten this far you can figure out how to do inserts updates you can figure out how to actually update all of these things there's tons of uh tutorials what i noticed is that there wasn't a good explanation about how all these things work and i think that that is probably the most important but anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did Make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.